What's going on YouTube? I'm Jordan Xavier, a videographer slash photographer based in Long Beach, California. And today is gonna be a fairly quick and simple video because I'm just gonna tell you what I think is the best bang for the buck 35 millimeter SLR on the market. And that is this thing right here, this Nikon F100. And this has been my favorite camera to use lately. I've wanted this camera for quite a long time and I finally bit the bullet and got it. I think I shelled out like 300 for it or so. And this is basically the little brother, shout out to Fonte and Big Pool, of the Nikon F5, which is a very popular film camera that a lot of people claim is like one of the best film cameras ever made along with the F3. But that camera is about a G, a thousand plus, and this camera is a fraction of the price for pretty much the same thing. This one isn't built as indestructible, but this is also lighter and in my opinion, more ergonomic and just easier to use. So first I'm gonna give you five reasons why I think, well, five and a possible reasons why I think that this camera is the best value 35 millimeter film camera. After that, we're gonna take it out into the field, field test it a little bit, and I'll show you some example photos at the end. So stick around for the end for that. And at any point of this video, if the spirit hits you, if you feel like it, definitely like and subscribe because it definitely does help the channel. So let's go. I don't know why I said that. That was kind of, why'd I do that like that? So let me start from the beginning at the top of the list. Number one is that this camera was introduced in 1999. And not only was that the year that most Def dropped Black on Both Sides, one of the greatest albums of all time, but it was also pretty much the tail end of the film era and pretty much the start and transition into the digital film, the digital camera era. So not only did Nikon have years and years to perfect their film cameras, but they were able to bring in some of the features from their digital cameras. So this camera pretty much feels and functions like a digital camera. So you even have a menu system, you have your LCD with info display, you have basically a state of the art matrix metering system, which I'll get into shortly. If you're coming from a digital camera to this, you'll feel right at home. So personally, I'm coming from a Canon AE-1 and that was pretty much a fully manual film camera. So like loading the film, you had to wrap it around the spools and stuff and, and press the shutter button and make sure it attached correctly. And you would do that or think you did that and then shoot a whole roll of film all day, get some bangers, rewind the film, open the back of the camera just to see that the film never properly attached to the little spool thingy things or the film broke as you were rewinding it and now you're just sitting there looking stupid in the face because you just lost all of those photos that you took. Don't ask me how I know. But anyway, with this phone camera, you don't have to really worry about that. You just put the film in, put it over to the side, close the back, press the shutter button, and you're good to go. The second thing that I love about this camera, which I'll get into a little bit later when I'm going through the quick start guide, is that this basically has a menu setting that you can customize the camera. So you can pretty much tailor this camera to function and shoot exactly how you want it to. So for instance, you can change the focus to the back button autofocus button right here you can change the self timer times you can change whether or not the camera automatically rewinds film once you're done shooting the roll and a whole bunch of different little settings like that you can really customize this camera to function exactly how you want it to function number three for me is going to be the ergonomics and how efficient this camera is so as long as you have your iso set and everything on this side of the camera then you can pretty much shoot a whole roll of film just like this. So everything that you need is on the side. Your dials to change the aperture and the shutter speed, your mode button, all of the information that you really need is in a viewfinder. And I could just shoot away like this without ever taking my face away from the camera. So that's the one thing that I definitely love about the camera. Not to mention how lightweight it is, which goes hand in hand with the ergonomics. Okay, also, how come nobody told me I had these AirPods in my ear the whole entire time? So the fourth thing for me is gonna be the lens selection. And when I first got this camera, I was kind of confused on what lenses to use. I've never really used a Nikon before because I have taste and I just didn't know what lens to go with. And I did some research and basically found out that you can use whatever lens you want from Nikon pretty much. So you can use pretty much any lens that's been constructed by Nikon from like the 1970s up. That includes 
includes AI, AIS, AF, AFD, AFS, and G lenses. And I might even be forgetting one. Just know that only some of these lenses are gonna be able to take advantage of that matrix metering mode system, which brings me to my fifth thing, the matrix metering mode system. So this is a state of, state of the art pretty much for this time matrix metering system. I said matrix metering system like five times, that's crazy. So I don't know the exact science behind it, but in short, it just means that this camera is gonna nail exposure more often than not. So most other film cameras basically metered from a black and white system in a gray scale. It goes on like a scale from, I forget the exact number, but like one to eight of shades of white, black, gray. And this one takes color into account when it's metering too. So it just, it's able to pull more information to basically give you a better exposure. And in my experience, that has seemed to be the case. I've shot a couple of rolls with this camera already, and it just seems to meter better than any of the other film cameras that I have. But I have one more thing that I love about this camera, and it's just the fact that it just takes regular AA batteries, and I think that's very underrated. So you can get AA batteries from pretty much any store like CVS, Target, wherever you go, you're gonna be able to find a store with AA batteries. Whereas some of the other film cameras that I have, you have to get like these obscure like CB4, R2, D2, 744 batteries and all that, just some like weird numbers and stuff that you're gonna have to scour the internet for or dig deep in some Home Depot bargain bin to find and it's just, a mess so it's nice to have batteries that you can basically find anywhere so if you run out of batteries at an inopportune time you can just run and grab some or just stock up on some of them so right now i'm out in sea ranch california and this is where i'm going to be field testing the nikon f100 i currently have a 35 millimeter f2d lens on here I already shot a roll of ultramax 400 yesterday and then today i'm running through a roll of kodak gold 200 so I'm gonna finish these rolls up and then you can see the sample photos and the footage and whatnot. Let me know what you think in the comments and then after that, I'll let you know my thoughts on the camera, some quirks that I found and maybe some tips and whatnot to help you use the camera. So let me get back to it. So I didn't really find any quirks about this camera per se. Everything functions as it's supposed to. I would just really say get into that custom settings menu and set this camera up the way you want it to operate to where it's perfect for you. Learn the ins and outs, get a good lens for it. I really like the 35 millimeter focal length. So this 35 millimeter F2 AFD lens stays on mine. And this is basically a Nikon F5 that's not as indestructible without the portrait and battery grip. It's a fraction of the price. It's 300 as opposed to 1000 plus. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend this camera if you're looking to step up from like your first beginner SLR 35 millimeter camera. Yeah, that's basically it. That's pretty much it for the F100. I hope this video helped you out in some way or gave you some type of insight. And hopefully you love this camera now as much as I do. As always, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments or hit me up on social media. I'm pretty much Jordan Xavier anywhere. And definitely hit that like and subscribe button if this video helped you or was entertaining to you at all because it definitely helps the channel out. And with that said, I think we're done here. I don't really have much else to say. So uh, yeah, peace. Thanks for watching.